Hello, everybody, and uh, this is Magdalena here talking about Hellas today. Uh, let's see, so I'm gonna do a quick sound check to make sure that everybody can hear me. And uh, Angela, if you can confirm, that would be great. Angela is my assistant, she's on the call with us today. And so, it's gonna just give us a couple of minutes. There's more and more people coming on. And there she is. Let's see what she's saying. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yay! Sound is always uh, kind of tricky with these things. Anyway, I am in my office today, uh, still unpacking the house. <laughs> and um, gosh, I gotta tell you, um, I had, before I get started on, hi there, Charlene from, from, uh, from Texas. I have to tell you, um, before we get started, I'm going to wait for about 100 people to get together so we can start talking about hair loss and how to reverse it because I know it's a really painful condition. Uh, so let's see, who do we have here? Robin Keith from Illinois, Rebecca from uh, 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 Rally in um, North Carolina. I can hear you. Yay! So tell us, tell me where are you from? I'm always, I always love to hear that. So just to give, when I give you a quick update, uh, it's been really quite a challenge moving to a new house because my stuff was in storage for a year in California, which had experienced like five months of nonstop rain. And I never really took any precautions of securing my items in the way that, you know, there's going to be a lot of humidity. And so my stuff, arrived, stuff really arrived moldy. And so it's been pretty a challenge to get rid of that mold. And then mold has really affected me, like in terms of my energy levels, been having headaches a lot. I've been fatigued, um, just have chest pains. And so, you know, it costs $3,000 to fumigate the whole house, <laughs> which is quite the expense. And so in the meantime, I'm trying to manage everything by cleaning things out, airing things out, using vinegar, tea tree oil, um, spraying that on everything. Angela, if you have any other ideas, let us know. Angela uh, works in my team and uh, she's also an Irma therapist. And so she's the she knows the magic of essential oils and natural healing. So let's see who else do we have here. Candace from Airbase in Texas, welcome. Christine from Monterey, California. Pam from Southern California. Nelson, BC, Canada, awesome guys. So today, um, I didn't really pick a topic. You guys uh, requested for to talk about uh, hair loss because you know that is that is a common issue. And I'm wondering how many of you here are actually suffering from hair loss, and how long has it been going on for, and what have you tried so far? So share that with us. Hannah from South California, um, at Leon uh, from California as well. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. And by the way. If you have, um, if you know somebody who's close to you uh, who's struggling with hair loss, tag them in a the comment below so they will know to come and watch the video later. They don't have to, if they don't catch us live, that's okay. Uh, there's going to be a replay. So uh, Chai Soul is from the UK. That's kind of late over there now. Okay, so we're almost reaching 100 people. So why don't we get started? Um, <clears throat> Karen is saying I've been suffering from hair loss uh, for at least a year. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> I want to talk about hair loss uh, because it's really, you know, for, uh, I mean, something is a topic that's really close to my heart because I've suffered through it as well uh, for a long time. And, and it wasn't just one or two things. I think it was a whole accumulation of many things. So, um, you know, at first, I don't know about you, but I was beating myself up for a little bit like, first of all, I'm doing all these things and I'm still losing hair, but also I was thinking like, it's kind of a superficial thing to take care of, you know, like, why am I worried about my hair loss? There's other more important things to worry about. Um, <clears throat> Amy Roy is saying, uh, from a UK, suffering for a long time, yeah. So, um, you know, and, and then I realized later that actually, <clears throat> hair loss really is a reflection of what is going on on the inside of your body. And if you resolve hair loss, if, if you get into the root cause of why are you losing hair in the first place, then a lot of other symptoms start going away. So no need to beat yourself up. There's no need to, at least, you know, I'm kind of projecting, maybe that's not you. Uh, but, you know, it is a big deal for, for all, of, all of us women, right? Because after all, our hair and skin really defines our beauty in many ways. 
like it or not, you know, you might say everybody's beautiful and <laughs> But when you've got clumps of hair coming out, it's very hard to feel sexy and beautiful, right? And your hair is like, sort of like brittle and dry. Um, Amy Roy says, doctor said low ferritin levels, taking iron supplements. Awesome. We're going to talk about that. So <clears throat> I've divided the uh, reasons why we are losing hair to three predominant things. The first one is hormonal. The second one is deficiencies. And number three is, um, are, is toxicity, issues with toxicity. So let's talk about every one of them. And I'm gonna um, glide over many of the issues because they can be bigger topics and point you to different resources. And Angela is here with me. Um, Angela is a part of our team. And she's gonna be posting links of different resources so you guys can go and do some research if you think that that could be the cause. So do you guys wanna, um, uh, Hannah is saying, started losing hair at my 30 and I'm now 39, I'm still losing. Um, I can see my, see my scalp, yeah. Oh. I know, I'm sorry, that's just like, so Hannah, I wanna talk about it. Actually, I'm not sorry. I wanna empower you today to tell you exactly what you can do to help yourself because hair loss happens for a reason and and I'm gonna give you the most of the common reasons that I know of um, because I had to cross out all of them in order to help myself as well. And I've worked with a lot of women who suffered through that as well. So do you guys wanna take a guess of what was the, um, what is the most common hormonal imbalance that's causing hair loss? Do you guys want to give it give it a shout? And for those of you who are coming on new, if you're having somebody who's suffering from a hair loss and is really desperate, has tried a lot of different things, um, you know, do do tag them in the in in the comments down below so they can watch the video later. So the first thing is Julia Olson saying is thyroid. Yes, absolutely. So. Too much estrogen, Amy Roy is saying. That could be also another reason. Um, so let's talk about the um, let's talk about uh, thyroid first. You know, very I talked about a thyroid a lot in the past. It's one of the most under-diagnosed uh, and misdiagnosed conditions because labs are too broad. So um, if you are suffering from symptoms like hair loss. Uh, fatigue, you're putting on weight no matter what, you are, you having also, not just hair loss, but also eyebrow loss, like a third of your eyebrows beginning to really thin or disappear. Um, you can't really sleep at night, you've got anxiety attacks, you de you becoming really depressed, uh, you're cold a lot of the time, those are screaming symptoms of thyroid issues, then I would highly recommend that you, um, that you basically get your thyroid tested properly according to the broad ranges, broader ranges of the, the more complete panels that I recommend. Um, now, so what do you do if you have a thyroid? If you know you have a thyroid issue and you have hair issue and you have hair loss going on, here's the thing. I know a lot of times we go and look for various different things like, you know, um, special shampoos, and then we apply all these different formulas on our head, and we, you know, spend 200 bucks in doing this and that, and and it kind of works maybe for a while, and then it stops working. So if you are having, as long as you have any thyroid issues, you've got to address the thyroid for you to experience really good quality hair. And it's not just hair loss, but also dry hair, uh, brittle nails. Those are some of the symptoms of thyroid issues. So Angela, could you just post um, thyroid diet coach, the study kid? Like, so if you are, if you suspect you have a thyroid, but you're not sure yet, uh, you, you haven't been diagnosed, there is a there is a study kit you can download from my website. And then there is a whole list of labs that details out what to test for, why, and how is it going to help you establish it as a thyroid. It is a thyroid and, Hash and, and or Hashimoto's disease, then you really need to work on um, appeasing your immune system, repairing your digestion, right? And um, anyway, get the, 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 get the thyroid kit um, and it's going to really help you a lot. And the URL is thyroiddietcoach.com um, and Angela is going to post that. So yeah, you guys, so a lot of you here are talking about... Um, um, Amy Roy is saying they won't give me thyroid supplement, but TSH levels are borderline only. So Amy, uh, it, it is, uh, TSH is a really, um, just one of the markers to look at. For example, my TSH has always been perfect, even by functional medicine standards, yet I had raging um, symptoms of, of Hashimoto's and thyroid. So TSH is, is very, very elusive. You've got to test all the other markers that I'm talking about. So get the thyroid diet study kit. Um, and then get the full picture from there. I don't want to spend the whole conversation around the thyroid today because there's a lot of other things I want to get through. 
So many of you are saying um, that you have, um, yeah, about the estrogen issues. So yes, so that's going to be my, the next thing I want to talk about is both estrogen dominance as well, low estrogen levels, both can be contributing towards hair loss. Um, how do you test for that is the best thing is to either look at the symptoms, right? So if you go to hormonesbalance.com slash quiz, hormonesbalance.com is my website slash quiz. And Angela, if you can post the link there as well, then um, do the, go by the symptoms and see if you have it. For testing for estrogen dominance, you can do um, saliva or urine testing um, to confirm that you have estrogen dominance, but really go with the symptoms. And, 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 you know, I find, find that estrogen dominance is one of the easiest hormonal balances that you can, um, that you can, um, that you can reverse basically. And, you know, so my story was that I started off with thyroid issues and I was losing a lot of hair. Then the thyroid got under control, but then I had estrogen dominance issues because of my liver, uh, stuff going on. And once I con it's only once I contain estrogen dominance, that's when the hair loss stopped. So how do you do deal with estrogen dominance? The biggest organ that's the most important organ really is, um, is the liver that metabolizes, um, estrogen. And so, uh, what I, another resource I want to point you to, if you haven't done so already, watch the free cooking, um, workshop that I have called how to use food to rebalance hormones. And I talked there about towards the end about the liver and how it helps with estrogen dominance. So cookingforbalance.com is the free workshop. If you haven't done it yet, uh, do so because it's really going to help you a lot with estrogen dominance. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to do a quick scan of do I still get thyroid? I have thyroiditis. Uh, Patricia is saying, I haven't, I haven't seen where I go for that yet. Yeah. So Patricia, get the thyroid diet starter kit. Um, that's really the, um, it's on thyroiddietcoach.com and Angela just pinned it to the top. I see it. Hey, you guys. So I put my hair up today. So I want to show you, can you see how much baby hair I'm having? Like I'm having this humongous growth of hair now. My hair has never been great. And normally I would kind of like gel it or something. So it doesn't look like, I look like a little orangutan. <laughs> but I, I do it on purpose because I want to tell you how, what I did. Um, I'm just going to go through my notes here first, the causes of hair loss. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about some solutions as well. So, but really the most important thing is to, you know, I, I did some things to stimulate hair growth and that's really working. And I'm, I'm going to tell you how I did it. But having said that, you also need to, you know, if you just do topical stuff that I'm going to talk about without addressing the root causes, right, such as, for example, the hormonal issues, then it's always going to be really hard for you to maintain good hair and, and, and maintain the momentum when your thyroid is underperforming, when you have estrogen dominance going on. So another one I want to talk about is somebody has mentioned that. Hello there, Rachel. Or is it Rochelle uh, Corso? Um, is PCOS. So somebody mentioned that. That's a really great point. PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And a lot of women, about 30% of women who have PCOS are go around undiagnosed. How PCOS gets um, is manifested in terms of symptoms is um, uh, Angela, the workshop to to post is post the cooking for balance workshop, not the thyroid detox uh, workshop. So just not to confuse people. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, PCOS typically happens when you have high testosterone levels. You also suffer from things like insulin resistance, high sugar levels. Um, and you know, and, and these two go hand in hand when, when you have high sugar levels, right. And a lot of times going undiagnosed. So fasting glucose, HA1C, uh, you have tired after, after meals, you're craving a lot of sugar right? Then what happens is, uh, high sugar levels are going to be, um, suppressing the sex hormone, uh, binding globulin, which then under allows too much of testosterone to float around in your blood. So basically you have access of testosterone. And when women have too much testosterone, we start having hair loss, especially in the front here, thyroid is kind of like all around hair loss where with PCOS and high testosterone, we start losing hair in front hair. That's very indicative. And then instead you also, you start having hair growth here, you know, above your lips, down on your chin, nipples, a little bit of hair is fine, you know, but not like 
when you, you know, you, you can start seeing like suddenly you're having 30 hair coming out of your nipples and on your tummy. So those are the, those are some of the, the ways to know that uh, that is an issue. And again, you know, it's not going to be putting stuff in your hair that's going to change it. You've got to take care of your hormones. How do you do that? You do that through managing your sugar levels and really reversing insulin resistance, which is completely doable. If you're pre-diabetic, if you have any kind of metabolic disorders going on, diagnosed or undiagnosed, um, that is the cause and that's what you're going to take care of. So as you can see, hair is kind of an interesting, hair loss is an interesting point because it shows you that something is going on inside of your body and is an indicator that your body needs help struggling with one or many other things, right? So does that make sense so far? And who here has um, suspects you have PCOS going on? Um, I mean, I say I joke that my hormones control me totally. Yeah, well, we can re you can reverse that. Let me tell you that. And they can become your allies rather than the enemy. Because like, I feel like a lot of times, you know, hormones are just becoming these, um, like our, you know, like this wild animal and that it's so hard to tame, right? Well, the truth is that actually you can develop this beautiful relationship with your hormones and they can really work for you and not against you. So any different... Um, any difference when hypothyroidism as a result of uh, radioactive therapy treatment? Yeah, so um, Melissa, I can't talk about this right now because then I can go on forever, but if you look at the Cooking for Balance workshop, it's really gonna help you a lot because you're gonna be on medication for the rest of your life, but how the medication is metabolized in your body through the gut and the health of your liver is gonna make a huge difference, gonna help your, um, is gonna help your absorption of, of the um, of the thyroid meds you are on. Oh my gosh, a lot of people with PCOS. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, okay, you guys. So, yeah, so PCOS, typically the, the, the most common is, like I mentioned, sugar issues, high sugar issues, and then the other one is women who develop PCOS after birth control pills. So if it's after birth control, um, then it's something that you need to work with a qualified practitioner because then it becomes a bit more of a com more complex way of managing PCOS. But if you have a, you know insulin resistant pre-diabetic kind of PCOS, then take care of that and you'll see health growth happening when you contain your sugar levels. One of my favorite ways of managing sugar levels is to really get yourself off processed carbohydrates, start eating a very different breakfast called a PFF breakfast. And, um, and I think I talk about it at the Cooking for Balance workshop. So check it out. That's really uh, important. Okay, let me move on. The last one is adrenal fatigue under the hormone uh, category. So for those of you who are new, there are three main reasons why there is hair loss happening. Hormonal deficiencies, mineral deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, and then toxicity. Three main reasons, right? So adrenal fatigue, think of it this way, is that, um, you know, has any of them, one of you issued uh, has issues here with like um you know when you're stressed you lose hair right can, can somebody relate to this it's like and then when the stress is over the hair kind of stops falling out so um that could be because of high cortisol levels and you know um yeah so that's something that is just as simple as fixing your adrenal fatigue <laughs> anyone here who's experiencing that Tammy's saying yes yeah <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so those are the hormonal issues, and you know I always talk about it that hormones are managed by three body systems: your gut, the health of your gut, the health of your liver, and the stability of your sugar levels. If you fix those three three things, or at least bring them to a fairly healthy spot, incredible starts happening. Incredible things start happening. Your thyroid starts getting revived because the attack stops because the gut is healed sugar levels stabilize, your metabolic disorders start disappearing, liver is hugely important as well, especially with estrogen issues, right? Rami's, uh, uh, Ami Roy is saying clumps of hair fell out, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's, that's, those are the hormonal ones. Um, is anybody here, do you guys have any questions? Rhonda is saying I have high cholesterol, I'm taking Lipitor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Right, so um, Rhonda, it's uh, 
I don't recommend it. You talk, if you work with an integrative practitioner, they can help you with getting off Lipitor and getting your, your sugar levels down. A lot of the times when you change your diet, especially when you get off processed carbohydrates and unhealthy fats, um, you know, and get on a really wholesome diet, um, you don't need Lipitor. So let me move on to the deficiencies. Um, you know, the big one is, and somebody has mentioned on this already, iron deficiency is a huge one, right? And here's an interesting thing about iron is that, you know, <clears throat> iron a lot of the time um, is there's a deficiency when we have low stomach acid. And I have done a whole call about low stomach acid. You need a sufficient amount of stomach in order to stomach acid in order to absorb iron out of the food that you're eating or even the supplements you're doing. I'm not a fan of iron supplements because they make you constipated. And constipation, which is not a call I did on, constipation is something that um, not only does it make you toxic because instead of evacuating toxins, they re-enter your bloodstream, but also, you know, hormones that were supposed to be evacuated and excreted, right, the metabolites, these harmful metabolites, hormonal metabolites re-enter the body one more time. So that's a nasty way of dealing with things. And <clears throat> so, but guess what? Um, do you guys want to guess what is my favorite way of, through food, through food, of bringing up your iron levels? I'm going to have a quick sip while you are typing away. Uh, Charlene Smith is saying liver. Yes, that's the one. Absolutely. So, you know, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, I know that many people in North America have not grown up with eating liver. And I would suggest for you to learn recipes that are really simple and delicious. Most people don't know how to eat liver because their parents would overcook it, make it really disgusting. And um, so there's a couple of recipes you can look up on my website. Um, one is a pate. So if you go to hormonesbalance.com, look on the recipes or just enter search for pate, P-A-T-E. You will get this easy French pate, which is absolutely delicious, converted liver haters to liver lovers. Now... You know, I used to live in New York and go and get um, those, you know, like liver pieces from uh, from a farmer from a farmer in Union Square, and I'll go there every. I think it was on Tuesdays I used to go, and he's like, I go there at ten o'clock, and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm out of liver. So I'm like, What do you mean you're out of liver? And he said, You know, I've had so many of my buyers, people had such great results getting liver and eating liver on a regular basis that. You know, she says like he's like I'm selling out so quickly. You have to hear be here like before nine o'clock. You know, I was living in Brooklyn, so I had to you had to travel all the way to Union Square quickly before nine o'clock to get liver. People were feeling just amazing with having the natural source of iron is always going to be better than supplements. Um, if you really can get over it, or you have no time, or you have no access to really clean liver, because that's really important, you have to get it from grass-fed animals and not from factory uh, farmed animals, right, is that get de um, desiccated liver pills. You can get that. So the paleo community is huge on that. If you just Google around how to find liver supplement, um, desiccated liver, then you're basically taking it in a form of a pill, but you do not have all the side effects such as, for example, constipation. So get your stomach acid up get the liver pills or get liver into your diet and it's going to make a huge difference if iron deficiency is the cause for your um, hair loss. Now another one which is very common is obviously vitamin B12 and biotin. Um, you know again it goes back to, by the way, iron is, uh, liver is also very high in vitamin B12 so by doing that you're just killing two birds with one stone, right? Iron and B12 and so <clears throat> um, yeah, so you can either test for it or basically bring in B12 uh, supplements. You know, within three weeks or so, you should see the difference. If, it's, if you're not experiencing any difference, your hair is still falling out, then vitamin Bs are not, and biotin is another one, uh, is not the issue. Um, very seldom I see this, but in case you're a very rigid vegetarian and, um, and you're not getting enough protein, lack of protein a lot of times can also contribute to hair loss. But I think most people here are... Um, probably not deficient in protein so but I just want to put it out there okay so let's talk about um, let me just quickly go look at the questions and see what you uh, cast iron skillet Randy Miller awesome thank you that's a really great one 
uh, to do is is uh, to use cast iron skillet to cooking with that. Just make sure that you do not have any rust on it or it's not leaching. You're like you're not leaving food. I made that mistake before of leaving food in the skillet, putting it in the fridge, and then eating off that. And I could see the black, uh, you know, the iron get, getting into the food. And then I tested, I ended up having actually high iron levels, which is also not good. Um, and that was because of just being silly and lazy. So when you cook with cast iron, do not store the food there. Immediately cook it, take it out. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Kim is saying she's got diverticulosis. Um, I think I spelled that right. <laughs> I have cysts, I have hormone issues, uh, feel fatigued all the time. Kim, so, you know, when, when you have so many issues going on at the same time, um, I really want to encourage you to look at, do the Cooking for Balance program, uh, the, the, do the workshop first and see, for an hour and a half I talk about their body systems that really govern uh, hormonal balance. And, you know, if you have cysts, a lot of times, so I don't know whether are those are polycystic um, ovarian cysts you're talking about, because then it points back to sugar levels. Remember how I talked about liver, sugar, gut issues? Those are, if you fix any of those problematic ones, if you have, say, for example, issues with sugar, you know, it's just incredible how hormones just start rebalancing themselves. Um, okay, let's see what else do we have coming in here. Certain foods seem to cause hair shedding. My stomach has been having issues and I can't eat meat because it hurts to do so. Candice, so uh, thank you for sharing. And one of my recommendation would be test for stomach acid. If you go to hormones, so and how to do that, you can listen to my call. It was a super popular call. It's actually one of the highest attendance we've had and a lot of people with aha moments, including my own team going like, oh my God, I didn't know that, is uh, go to hormonesbalance.com, my website, and search for stomach acid. Um, and then you will see there is a call that I did on how to test if you have sufficient stomach acid and then how to fix it, because that's gonna help you tremendously with um, the body producing sufficient enzymes to break down the meat. And that's what I see a lot of times with people feeling much better as vegetarians, which I totally get it, um, you know, because they are, and they are almost like revolted by meat and by fats. And that's because when you have low stomach acid, your body is just not breaking down the proteins um, sufficiently. Uh, <clears throat> so Brenda is saying, I have gallbladder removed after that, after that I have a lot of health issues, fatigue, burning in my stomach, hair loss, lack of sleep, depression, PCOS. So Brenda, yeah, I, that's, thank you for sharing. I, I, I post that if you guys follow me on Facebook on hormones balance, just like the page. If you scroll down the history, I talk a lot about a gallbladder. The gallbladder <clears throat> is storage, stores bile, right? And bile gets released for digestion purposes, especially of fats, is an emulsifier. Uh, but it also helps to get rid of estrogen. So I see this all the time, women having their gallbladder removed, and three months later, they start having um, hormonal issues. And unfortunately, doctors, they don't tell us this. They say, you don't need your gallbladder, which is kind of true, but the quality of life changes. So Brenda, it's, if you already had it removed, I would suggest look into ox biles uh, to fix that. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, pa, pa, pa. Uh, Randy is saying, can you address the balance of different estrogens? Randy, so I want to focus on hair loss today on my call, but Randy, what you can do is go to, go to my website, hormonesbalance.com, and, um, and look at, just enter estrogen, and I talk about estrogen, estrogen dominance, and how it happens. And, uh, but you know what, the good news is, so that's until actually to understand what is estrone, what's estradiol, what's est estriol, the three different types of estrogens. Um, some metabolites of estrogens can also be harmful. So it depends on how geeky you want to go in there, read the article. But the good news is that majority of the estrogen issues that goes on is again managed by the gut, which is with, with a subset of bacteria called the estrobolome and the liver. So it kind of goes back. I feel like I'm repeating the same story over and over again. And I do apologize for that if it gets boring, but it's important. It's just so when I drive the point across that <clears throat> when you take care of your gut, you take care of your liver, like estrogen dominance just starts going away. And you know, you might intellectually want to know the difference between the different estrogens and the metabolites, but you know what? Once you fix the liver, you fix the gut, a lot of things start disappearing. You're like, 
who cares whether it was my the uh, you know did I have too much of estro uh, estradiol or was it because of the estro metabolites that were causing this? It just doesn't really matter because the liver is gonna take care of all all of them. Uh, cha cha cha. Let's see. <clears throat> Um, so Sheila is saying I'm having an excessive amount of hair loss on my edges and the center of my head. So Sheila, I would, you know, I'm, by no means am I diagnosing you here, but I'm just going to put it out there, talk to your doctor and see what are your sugar levels like and rule out PCOS. Um, so let me talk about uh, toxicity. Uh, now the third item, for those of you who are coming in late, I talked about the common reasons for hair loss, which is the first one was hormonal issues, thyroid, estrogen dominance, adrenal fatigue, PCOS. Then I talked about uh, mineral and, and vitamin deficiencies, biotin, B12, iron, the biggest ones. And then we talk about toxicity, which is heavy metals. I strongly recommend that <clears throat> um, if you have lived in polluted areas, if you've ever lived in China the way I have, I'm pretty sure I got it from there. If you have a history of low stomach acid and parasites, if you have um, been eating a lot of tuna in the past, if you have not been living the healthiest lifestyle and you know it, then I would recommend highly to test for heavy metals through urine, not blood, uh, because urine shows you what's 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 deposited on a cellular level. Um, heavy metals, especially mercury and lead, can be a huge contributor to hair loss. And unless and until this natural chelation methods that um, that you can learn about. If you sign up to my mailing list, you will know, um, you know, one of the things I teach about in the thyroid detox program is how to do natural chelation. But just find out first whether you have it and then, and then uh, you can always reach out to my team and ask them, how do you deal with heavy metals? And that's part of the detox program. So, and the last thing is liver, uh, sluggish liver. I've seen this over and over again, which is, um, you know, sluggish liver can contribute towards all these hormonal issues, but also slow detoxifications of heavy metals. And so I've seen this a lot when women have done our detox program called thyroid detox and just like hair just starts growing back so easily, right? Because you get rid of a lot of things at the same time. You support your liver, you clean up your gut, you um, get rid of a lot of times the heavy metals naturally. So look into that as well. And you know, we are in spring right now. I would highly recommend um, try out, try doing a detox. Like, a, you know, we have a 12 day detox. It starts with a free workshop. See whether it's the right thing for you. It's called, it's called thyroiddetox.com. So if you, you know, if you're feeling sluggish and toxic and you feel like something you want to try because it's spring and you have maybe 12 days that you want to uh, kind of like press the reset button going into spring and summer, then look at thyroiddetox.com. That's a really great one. And, and you don't have to have thyroid. I call it thyroid detox because that's just the brand name we have, but it's really for anybody with any hormonal issues will benefit tremendously from it. So I want to talk to you about, can you guys see my all that baby hair that's just sticking out everywhere i mean can you see this i purposely like didn't gel it and i look like a little orangutan and on this side so this side as well i've got like a lot of hair growth back right and <clears throat> and so i want to sh share with you what i have done but this is again i'm doing i'm sharing this with you what i'm doing topically um provided you have and it, that helps with hair regrowth and maybe managing slowing down the hair loss. So do that. What I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you what I had done. Do that while you are in that as a short term strategy. And it is a long term strategy. Take care of all these other things we talked about hormones, deficiencies and toxicity. Okay. So this method actually is an old Indian method, um, which is basically um, using something called fenugreek right? Um, you spell it F-E-N-U-G-R-E-E-K, fenugreek. And uh, let me just write it here just in case, because I know for some of you it might be a new. It's an herb, it's an ancient herb that's been used in Ayurveda and, you know, in Indian cuisine, but also in Arabic um, cuisine, but also in, if, as a medicinal, because, you know, in a lot of countries like Chinese, like in Chinese culture, in Indian culture, in Arabic culture, there is a very thin line between what is food and what is medicine. Uh, there's, there's a huge crossover of those two, right? 
So fenogreek is wonderful at stimulating hair growth, and that's exactly what I've been doing. Um, and so the way you do it, so write it down, because I'm not going to repeat this, so write it down. This is the way you do it. You, to, you do two tablespoons of dry fenogreek. You can get that from even Whole Foods sells it. Most health stores will sell it. Um, definitely if you're near an Indian grocer, an Arabic grocer, Middle Eastern grocer, they for sure will have it. So not powder, but fenogreek seeds. And you want to you wanna basically put it in a glass of water. So I'm talking about like 12 to 16 ounces of hot water in a glass, not plastic, right? In a glass. And let it steep for, 20, for 24 hours. What you're going to end up having is like this, uh, you know, yellowish color. It actually looks like pea. <laughs> pea color uh, concoction, right? That then you transfer to a plastic bottle. And what you can do as an extra is add a couple of, you know, when I say a couple, I mean like between four to six drops of clary sage. Now, clary sage is an essential oil that does have, promotes estrogenic activity at the hair level, hair root level. So again, it can stimulate hair growth. And so you're basically using that concoction to... Um, you know, to, to rub into your hair and it doesn't, it makes your hair smell a little bit fenugreeky, you know, but it doesn't, you, right after you apply it, you can dry your hair and then when you comb it, it actually gives a really beautiful volume. So you can use this on a daily basis. Um, it's not like oils that you look grease, like a grease ball and it looks awful. You can actually go on it with your life, right? So do it after a shower and the whole idea is to leave it in for a fairly good amount of time. So... Um, Denise is saying, what kind of oil? It's not an oil. It's a, it's a, um, it's, it's an herb. Um, fenogreek. So F, F E N U G R E E K, fenogreek. And many people have already posted that here. So, um, yeah, so basically that's really what it is. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I was doing that for three to four days a week of really rubbing it in and leaving it in. And I have to tell you, I mean, this is the result. This is what I'm showing you, you know, how much of hair growth. And I can tell you that, you know, I genetically, I don't have great hair. My mom has got really thin hair. My dad has got very thin hair. Like we don't, you know, I don't have a Selma Hayek kind of hair, beautiful hair. I do not. And so my hair is kind of like thin and, you know, it has never been like awesome. It's never been like the biggest assets that I have, right? But it's really nice to see that, that growth, and it's not a normal growth that I normally have. Like, if I did nothing about it, I would have just maybe a tiny bit of hair, but not as much as I have right now. And my, my hair also feels much fuller now. So I saw the effect after about a month. That's when I started seeing the hair growing back. This I've been doing this since February, so end of February, so beginning of March, so March. April, so it's been two and a half months, and that's about you know that's about the hair length you get for, for within two and a half months, right? Hey, you guys, isn't that awesome? Just just a simple thing like that, um, you know. So Rebecca is saying, uh, Young Living Clary Sage, Clary Sage. Yeah, it's any Clary Sage. Uh, I don't promote any particular brands, and uh, I don't particularly like multi-level marketing. Um, so it's Clary Sage, C-L-A-R-Y Sage, S-A-G-E. It's different from Sage. It's actually a very different plant. It's, and Clary Sage actually smells beautiful. So you, you can, you can, you kind of like doing a perfume thing in your hair. Uh, let's see, what, what other questions do I, um, do I have coming in here? So yeah, so fenugreek concoction, putting that in your hair with clary sage, four to six drop of clary sage in a, in a plastic bottle. And that's something that you can basically, you can apply that into your hair scalp. You don't care, you don't worry about your hair per se. You really want to get it on your scalp. And this is where, because you're stimulating the, the, the follicles and not the hair itself, right? Hey, you guys, so I hope you have found this helpful. Um, and for those of you who are joining in late, we talked about the three different groups of problems that are causing hair loss, hormonal, thyroid, adrenals, PCOS, which is high testosterone, as well as adrenals and estrogen dominance. We talked about vitamin deficiencies, iron, B12, biotin. Uh, and then we talked about toxicity, which is heavy metals, sluggish liver that can be contributing towards, um, uh, yeah, 
uh, towards Hella. So Stacy's saying, thank you, Magdalena, you're awesome. Thank you. Can you leave us, can you leave it in or does it have to be washed out? Yeah, Sheila, so I mentioned that you do, you do want to leave it in uh, and you do not want to wash it out uh, yet. So is it safe for girls, uh, younger girls, 12 years old? Yes, it is. Uh, how often do you do this weekly? I said yes. I uh, mentioned three to four times a week I will do that and leave it in. And uh, do you put it in a spray bottle or spray it on? That's a great question, actually, Trisha. You can spray it on just as long as it gets right into your roots here, you know, and you go spray, 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 right? And you do it all around your head. Spray bottle is perfectly fine as well. And I just want to let you know, in July, we've got a, I've got a new program coming out called Herbs for Balance. And those are exactly going to be that kind of um, uh, recipes that I actually, we just finished filming two weeks ago. You know, balms, concoctions like this, decoctions, natural perfumes, natural deodorants, natural shampoos. And it's one of the solutions to stimulate hair growth. So... Yeah, I hope that um, you check it out and I'll let you know when, when the program is going to be out. Okay, awesome. I hope you, uh, do you apply it to dry hair or wet hair, uh, Randy, is on the scalp? It doesn't really matter. Uh, either way is fine. I do it, I do it after, um, after I shower and because that's where I, I feel like it feels good to apply it. But you can apply it to dry hair as well. Okay, you guys, I gotta go. Have a lovely, lovely weekend. Uh, we've had snow here in Boulder, <laughs> in Colorado yesterday, and now today's melting down. So does not gonna stop me from getting out and hugging a bit of a tree and just being out in nature, because nature is my medicine. All right, everybody, do something that's really wonderful this weekend. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this was helpful if you're suffering from hair loss and always I would love to hear from you um, in a couple of months let me know whether those things that you put in place whether that's helped you or not my team and I always love to hear from you okay bye for now take care